if you're working with aggressive people, you're probably wondering how to deal with them. Today, I'm talking to Eleanor Shakiba about specifically how to deal with aggressive behavior. Eleanor, lots of people find aggression at work hard to handle. So what should you do when you're faced with an aggressive outburst at work? Yeah, that, it's probably everyone's worst nightmare because we have an immediate reaction to that emotionally. Um, and so what we need to do is handle our own reaction first and then deal with the issue. So what I usually say is start by reinterpreting what is going on in the situation. In other words, try to find out why the other person is behaving the way that they are instead of reacting emotionally yourself. And then take that issue and see it as the point for the conversation. And let the person know you want to collaborate with them and then move through a process of problem solving with them. Yes. So the more that you can show them that you are issue focused and that you're not going to respond in a fight type way, the more likely it is that you will de-escalate the situation as quickly as possible. Okay, so how do you put that process into action then? So often the first step is to actually manage your own reaction. So here's the person who's just abused you, for example. How do you manage your own state? It's about actually looking at what's going on for the other person. Um, so just to give you a really simple example, I was once running a training session in a university, so I wouldn't have thought literacy would be an issue. So I didn't even question the um, part of a process where I handed out instruction sheets to people. And I handed the group leader instruction sheet to a particular man in the group who picked up the piece of paper, threw it down and said, I'm not going to do this stupid exercise and stormed out of the room. And someone came up later and said, oh, he can't read. And I realised, OK, it had nothing to do with the stupid exercise. Yes. It was all to do with, was I aware of what was going on for him? So if you can work out what's going on for the other person, that often stops you from reacting and becoming emotional yourself. OK, so how would you do that? What would the steps be to do that? So say to yourself, this is about them. It's not about me. Um, sometimes it can be helpful to do a little bit of a visualisation where basically you imagine I'm filming a nature documentary and I'm observing this amazing display of human aggression mm -hmm. and I'm doing the voiceover and I'm just describing the behaviour that is happening and what it means for the other person. And by doing that, what you do is you're separating yourself from the other person right. and you're allowing yourself to say, I'm okay. Right. So what do you do to handle the other person? Well, that's a really good question. Um, so the first thing you're wanting to do is show them that you understand. Mm -hmm. Totally counterintuitive. When someone says, you're a stupid idiot, mm -hmm. you don't feel like turning around and saying, yeah, I agree. But I'm going to say this, if you can agree with something, it will stop their reaction straight away. So you say, I agree, we need to sort this out. I agree. This is an important issue. How about we go into a meeting room and we talk about this issue because it really is important? Or how about we meet later at three o'clock this afternoon and talk through how we can resolve this? So you're allowing yourself still to be in control of the situation, but you're saying to the other person, I agree, this is an important issue. And then you sit down and say, OK, what is it that you think about this situation? What's going on for you? And you listen until they've got nothing else to say. Okay. But then you say, that's your perspective. Now I think it's my turn to explain what's going on. Is it OK if I do that? So you never just leave it at active listening, which is a trap HR practitioners sometimes fall into. Right. The next step is to say, there are other people involved here. So now I've listened to you, please listen to my perspective or please listen to the perspective of other people. And then you use flame-proof language, as I call it, neutral language, to describe behaviours and say, I find some problems in what's going on here. We need to sort those problems out. Let's talk about how we can do that. What happens if that person refuses to work with you? They take the my way or highway approach. What do you do then? You can either say, OK, I understand that this is a really important issue for you. It's also important for me. I think we need to take this to someone else to help us to work this through. Right. Or you can say to them, well, I am prepared to work with you to change this, but if you're not prepared to collaborate with me, I think we need to finish the conversation for now. But you always let them know that you're going to come back to it because the issue is important and needs to be resolved. And what happens if they're 
aggression continues despite you speaking to them? Well, at that point, you have a responsibility to set some boundaries. So there is appropriate behaviour in the workplace and there's inappropriate behaviour. And so sometimes you need to be really clear and direct and say, OK, I want you to sit down and I want you to lower your voice and I want you to explain to me what's going on. And if that doesn't happen, I'm going to ask you to go home and think about consequences of what's going to go on. If you continue behaving like this, then we're going to have to look at disciplinary action. I'm sure you don't want to do that, and I'm willing to work with you around how we can change this response that you're having, but you need to make the choice about what you want to do. So you need to be really firm around the boundary, but what you're doing is you're making them take a choice. Mm -hmm. I either continue being aggressive and have discipline reaction, yeah. or I start to get some help and make some changes. What's the difference between a counsellor and a coach, and how do you actually choose? So you can have a look on my website where I have some questionnaires that help you work out the difference between counselling and coaching and also give you some suggestions around where you can get some assistance. Or if you've got an employee assistance provider, um, then you can go to them as well. Eleanor, thanks once again for joining us today. It's been fantastic to hear these tips on how to handle aggressive behaviour in the workplace. I'm really looking forward to catching up with you again next month. What are we talking about? So next month we're looking at the exact opposite of aggressive behaviour and how you can help passive employees to speak up in situations like meetings.